Hey guys, it's Angie Atkinson, and today at QueenBeing.com, we're going to discuss breaking up with a narcissist. So, let's get started. All right, so you're breaking up with a narcissist, and you know, or maybe you're divorcing a narcissistic husband or wife. First of all, let me just say I'm really sorry that you're going through that because I really know how hard it can be. Um, I've been there, and I'm hoping that maybe I can help you get through it with a little bit less pain and a little more ease than I did, okay? Uh, so let's just start here. This is not going to be your standard breakup advice video, okay? Um, I know you have been around and I'm sure that you've seen that there's plenty of breakup advice available to you online, okay? Um, but most of it is geared either toward helping you get your ex back or toward healing from a normal relationship. Now. But but the question is then, you know, what if you either don't want the person back or what if you know that it's useless because you've already recognized that you've been dealing with a narcissist in a toxic relationship? What do you do then, right? Well, what if you want advice? What if you want to know how to move on as quickly and pain-free as possible? Maybe you've read all the standard breakup advice and you don't really see how a whole lot of it applies to you. Or, you know, maybe you see some of it applies and some of it is just outrageously wrong. So... There's a reason for that, and it's because you've been involved with a narcissist, and narcissists really aren't normal, so to speak. Um, so breaking up with a narcissist is pretty much a big cluster truck of messy, painful, and confusing. Please note that I said truck and not the F word right there, okay? <laughs> first things first, you need to recognize, of course, that you don't need a mate to be happy, and it's certainly not the narcissist, okay? You have to be able to find happiness kind of within yourself. So how do you do that, right? Well, let's talk about that. It is a process, but of course, you already know that you don't need to be attached to someone in order to be happy, right? And despite what a lot of certain types of love gurus might tell you, all you need really is yourself. And in fact, when you become fully happy with yourself, that's really the time that you actually might find someone who is worth your time because then you will be, you know, fully yourself, which right now you probably aren't and you're gonna need some time to heal. Okay, and in some cases, you know, what you really need is, is the ability to cleanse your life of the negativity that's still invading it, right? Okay, so we already know we don't need a mate to be happy. It's not about that, okay? And the next thing that you need to focus on is why does it hurt so much when you have to go no contact with a narcissist, which is, of course, the only solution to you know, completely ending narcissistic abuse. If you have to go low contact because you're dealing with a child that you're sharing with a narcissist or that person's part of your family or part of your job and you aren't able to go no contact for whatever reason, it's a whole other thing. But there are coping, coping tactics that you can use, okay? But why does it hurt so much to go no contact? Well, first of all, you already know and you knew then that the relationship was going nowhere fast and you knew that it was best to call it quits because if you didn't, the cycle would just continue. Of course, you also might be the person who actually got dumped this time. But in either case, knowing the truth about the situation certainly won't take away the pain and loneliness, right? So when you use the duo method to recover, which is my pet personal re recovery method, uh, you have a working plan that kind of helps you get through the pain, okay? Well, let me give you a quick refresher on the duo method before we move forward in case you haven't heard of it yet, okay? So there are three steps. It's very simple. The first step is to discover the problem that you're dealing with. The second step is to understand the problem that you're dealing with. And the third step, of course, is to overcome the problem that you're dealing with, right? And this is really how smart people everywhere can solve their problems. Now, if you want to learn more about the Duo method, you can check out my YouTube channel or you can go ahead and just visit queenbeing.com slash duo, D-U-O, for more information, okay? All right, moving right along. So the first thing, obviously, you've got to discover the problem and acknowledge it. Well, you've already done this at this point because you're sitting here watching this video right now, okay? So after discovery, you've got to learn how to understand the situation better, and here's where you are now, okay? So this is where we're going forward. If the person that you were involved with is a narcissist, then you may be um, reeling and you might be confused by the constant roller coaster ride that your relationship has become, okay? And now that you've been discarded, you can rest assured that while your narcissist will most likely come back at some point, it's definitely not going to be worth your trouble, trouble to try again, okay? That's called hoovering, my friend. Look into it. Narcissists are very unlikely to change 
if they ever do change. And I, I've, I've published research on this before, not just my own research by actual scientists in, in, you know, controlled study situations. And even if, you know, narcissists do appear to change, it's only an attempt, like I said, to get what they want, to manipulate you into coming back to them and being their source of narcissistic supply again. And just to refresh your memory, the person, the narcissistic supply is the person who keeps the narcissist's ego lifted up and the same person who serves as an emotional dumpster when the narcissist feels a certain amount of narcissistic injury in his or her life. Okay? So, with all of this in mind, let's go ahead and talk about a few different strategies that you can use that will help you to move on and find peace as you go about healing and recovering from the narcissistic abuse that you've just been through. Okay? All right. So, first up, focus on the stuff that makes you feel good and positive about yourself and your life. So think of the things that you enjoyed doing before you and that person were together, okay? If your relationship was a long one, you know, maybe it would be a little bit harder to remember a time that you weren't together, but you can do it, and even if you've been with the person for your entire life, which is not really that feasible, but let's just say, all you remember is life with this person, well then focus on the things, people, and, and feelings that... that and situations that you always wished you could focus on but you couldn't because you were oppressed by that person you feel me so like in some situations maybe you know you always wanted to paint or maybe you always wanted to um, you know I don't know open up a tennis shoe shop or whatever find something like that and and move toward it because that's really gonna take you to the next level in your healing okay focus on things that make you feel good about yourself one more thing before I continue, um, this is also where the gratitude practice can come in, okay? I tell everybody, think of ten, 10 things you're grateful for every single day and write them down or put them on Facebook or whatever. Um, and if you can't, you know, think of them all at once, you can think of them throughout the day. I like to do it as soon as I wake up in the morning and sometimes I like to do it any time I have any kind of negative issues in my life. It's a really great way to change your vibe, okay? The other thing I've been telling people lately is to think of three things that you love about yourself because one of the things that narcissistic abuse is so famous for doing to us is taking us from the place where we can actually understand ourselves and see ourselves to taking us into this place where we have this kind of mask over our eyes and we aren't able to really discern who we are because we have been shown this very ugly person by the narcissist and that is in order to, for the narcissist to continue to control us and make us feel bad about ourselves but now you're getting away from the narcissist and you have to recognize that it's time for you to love yourself so that's what I would recommend to you 10 things it's it's a you know I gotta come up with a good swing line for it but you know it's 13 ways <laughs> 13 things you can do real quick think of 10 things you're grateful for think of three things you love about yourself it'll totally change your vibe okay all right number two focus on making any changes that you've been meaning to make so if you have been planning to get in better shape you want to start running you want to start a you know diet you want to learn to sew whatever now's a great time to do that if you've been planning on getting a new job or taking some classes to advance your career or you know joining a, a volunteer group now's the time to do that my friend now you've got the time if you can start to begin to make those changes you'll begin to focus on things that actually will be positive for you in the future and not things that you can't control because my friend don't forget when you can't control something focusing your energy on it is wasting your energy and also bringing more negativity into your life okay so remember to focus on the things that you want not what you don't want focus on things you can control not things you can't control if you can't control it there's no point in stressing yourself out about it you feel me all right Woo. number three join a support group like span which is support for people affected by narcissism and relationships that's my free and confidential online support group uh, you can go to queenbeing.com slash span s-p-a-n to learn more about that Anyway, um, when you do that, you can connect with people who understand what you're going through, like I said. And narcissists, they cause a very specific type of pain that, and, and, and psychological injury to you that often results in like PTSD, CPTSD, uh, dissociation. I could go on, obviously, depression. I could go on and on, but it's a very specific type of pain that not a lot of people understand. You feel me? So often the only people who really kind of get it are people who have been there and experienced it and honestly I've seen this when you know with with psychiatrists psychologists therapists people who are licensed to provide mental health care 
are not educated about narcissistic abuse. That is part of the reason that I do what I do because so many people have come to me and said, oh my God, I thought I was crazy and a psychologist agreed, <laughs> but it turns out I was just being gaslighted or whatever. So this is why a group like SPAN can change your life because when you know that you're not crazy and I'm actually, I've collected a bunch of comments from my SPAN members I'm going to share with you in my next video, uh, but when you know that you're not crazy, it can literally change your life, my friend, okay? Moving right along. So, like I said, this, these kinds of action steps and activities will allow you to feel hopeful and positive about your future. This is going to allow you some peace in the short term, and it might even help you to move on more quickly in the long run. Okay? All right, next up. So, what I suggest is that you use whatever you need to you do, whatever you need to do to make you feel better. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's ice cream, vegging out in front of the TV. As long as you're only focusing on the positive people and activities, you are going to be able to cope with the pain and the temporary loneliness better. But just a tip from me to you, my friend: don't let yourself grieve forever. Don't let yourself mope around forever and ruin your life. Now's the time for you to set an end point on your grieving. Decide that you are not going to allow yourself to mourn for longer than X number of days or weeks or whatever, okay? So just to give you a feel for like a, an appropriate amount of time, if you are mourning a long-term marriage relationship, say 15, 20, 30 years, whatever, I still wouldn't give yourself more than three weeks to mourn, if that, okay? Shorter relationships, I'd cap it out at a week, you know? somebody that you weren't all that serious about that you had to end the relationship with, give yourself 48 hours, my friend. Tell yourself that you can cope how you need to cope. You can mourn and you can do what you can mope. You can do whatever you need to do for that amount of time. And then on that target date, that's it. You feel me? On the target date, that's when it's over. You're no longer allowed to whine about the past. You're no, you've got to move forward with a more positive and focused attitude. That is assuming that you want to move forward because obviously I think that you're sitting here watching this video. You want to know how to feel better and this is what I'm telling you. This is what works, okay? Believe it or not, it really works. I just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Try it. It's shocking. I know it seems silly, but I've used this way, you know, literally every terrible thing that's happened to me in my life since I figured out this particular strategy of setting an end time to your moping and your whining. <laughs> Since that's happened, I have changed my life so drastically because even when it comes to someone dying or something terrible happening, I have been able to say, okay, I'm only letting myself cry about this for X amount of days and then I'm done. That doesn't mean that I don't continue to feel sad at times. It just means that I stop focusing on the sadness and the pain and I start to focus on things I can control. Mourning a situation, mourning a person, mourning a relationship is normal and necessary. You're going to have to let yourself do it. And you're going to have to let yourself cry if you want to cry, scream if you want to scream, do whatever you need to do, my friend. But at some point, you have to get there and you have to go, that's it. No more. I'm going to be happy now. I'm going to move forward now. Because I promise you this, even when someone that you love very much dies, okay, that person is not going to want you, would not, would never want you to sit around and cry about them forever, okay? And so if you think of it that way, you would think that a person who you loved, who died, who loved you back, would want you to be sad for a while, to remember them for a moment, and then move forward. Well, if you think about a person like a narcissist who has no ability to empathize with you, who obviously does not care about you in the way that you care about him or her, you know, the longer you allow that person to make you feel sad and angry and upset and hurt your heart and hurt your stomach and hurt your soul, the longer you allow that person to continue to control you. So take the time to stop letting yourself be controlled. Okay? You gotta set yourself free by being yourself. Okay, that is where that's the key to all of it, my friend. Authenticity. It's underrated, right? It's it's more about being honest with the world. It's more than that. It's way more than being honest with the world. It's about truly being honest with yourself. Okay? There are a lot of different advantages to this and most importantly <laughs> You won't feel the need to change yourself or your thoughts or your feelings or your words or your actions to make someone else happy, okay? You, you can relax and be yourself. It's a beautiful thing. Before you can be authentic, it's important that you know yourself. This includes your values and your goals, okay? So ask yourself, do you really know yourself? Do you? Let's talk about that. Authentic, authenticity, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become possible when you know exactly what's important to you. So let's talk about this. 
how do you embrace authenticity? How do you really find what you are, the essence of you? How do you do that? Okay. Well, first of all, you have to give up the need to appear perfect. Okay. We've all been there. I've done it. But being, you know, excellent is good enough or being perfectly yourself. I love it. That's how you should roll. Okay. But seriously, when you don't need to appear to be what someone else defines as perfect, you are in a position to be honest. And sometimes this comes with age, um, but I think it also comes with emotional maturity. You know, there was a time in my life when I would have never gotten on camera like I did a few days ago and showed you how I have this issue with my eyes, right? I don't care anymore because now I'm securing myself and I know that if you have a problem with my eye issue, well, you'll probably uh, stop watching me and we'll be fine with that, okay? Because I feel like I should be honest with you as my audience or, or my people <laughs> and I know that you probably would like to be honest with everyone as well because I've been in a place where I wanted to be like this is who I am and I don't care what you think and it took me a really long time to get there okay so no one can be perfect and honest at the same time is what it comes down to so don't put on a show for the world of you know to, pretending to be something you're not you're only going to feel bad about yourself later if you do that. You already know that because you probably spent plenty of time trying to pretend you were something you were not in order to make your narcissist happy. Am I right, my friend? So it's okay to be less than spectacular. Just be the best self that you can be. Be the best possible version of yourself. Okay? That's all you can be, my friend. And that is a beautiful thing. Okay? Next up. Number two, <laughs> know your values and live by them. So if you know who you are, you know what you want, you know what your values are, you know what your ethics are, and you consistently live by them, well, you're already on the authentic path, my friend. Okay, so in case you're not sure, grab a piece of paper or a pen or a, and a pen, pencil, or a Word doc or a notepad doc or whatever, and let's start, let's do this, all right? So make a list of your values and determine five of which that are most important to you okay so and then ask yourself are you living your life according to these values and if you are would it be obvious to other people that you're that you have these values and you know decide to make your decisions based on your values you feel me and then be willing to share your values with others if you're not proud of yourself and who you are then you certainly um, aren't going to be able to you know put yourself out there if you if you have values that are different from the values of the people around you then maybe you need to look for some people who have more similar values than you you feel me so think about that number three notice when you're not being authentic okay it's really easy to forget okay um, you might find yourself transforming yourself into different facets of yourself based on the situation and in certain cases that's expected obviously you're going to behave differently at a PTA meeting than you would at you know a Friday night party right with your friends having drinks it's, you're just going to be a different person so you know obviously there are certain levels of selfness <laughs> certain different facets of yourself right but um, let's look at it this way a first date is a good example of what I'm talking about are you being authentic on a first date or are you pretending to be someone you're not you know if you can keep an eye on this you might actually prevent yourself from getting stuck with another narcissist in the future because it's what those times that your authenticity starts to wane that you might find yourself trying to be something you think someone else wants you to be which you probably spent a lot of time doing with the narcissist and quite honestly if you're not actively working on it you might accidentally slip back into those behaviors because you spend so long pleasing other people instead of actually focusing on what you want so just take notice of it if you if you feel like you're feeling uncomfortable and you're feeling weird and you don't know why it might be because you're not being yourself okay all right next step number four know your goals what do you want out of life do you even know are you willing to let other people know are you willing to say this is what I really want in my life by knowing your goals you can actually live your life in such a way that you lead up to your goals and make them happen yeah so on that same piece of paper or document make a list of your short-term and long-term goals how do they align with your values think about these things these are important questions to ask yourself because if you're starting to get to know yourself again you might not even realize what your values are maybe you need to define them now okay so let's move on to number five with that in mind I'm gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions get ready okay you feel free to pause the video in between questions if you need to write them down all right 
So what are your defining characteristics? Describe yourself honestly and hey, ask yourself, how would someone else describe you? Would, they, would someone that you, like a casual acquaintance, would they agree with your description of yourself? And what about someone who knows you really well? Would they agree with the description of yourself? Think about it. And I'm not talking about the narcissist here. I'm talking about a relatively healthy person who knows you well. All right. What about your closest friend? Now, let me ask you another question. How many people really know you well? If you think that there aren't that many, then ask yourself why. I mean, if you're living authentically, it should be easy for someone to kind of get a good picture of you and understand how to describe you to people around them, right? Well, what are your negative characteristics? You know, are you impatient? Are you messy? That's okay. Everybody has something. Just write down what things that you don't love about yourself, especially if these are things that um, are true that you you are aware of. You've discovered these issues, okay? And if you have discovered that you're impatient or you're messy or you're a little bad, you know, little little flute. Um, I was gonna say bad with money, and I, I was looking for a better word, but bad with money, <laughs> bad with uh, the housekeeping stuff. Or, you know, whatever it is. Are you willing to allow other people? to see those things about you or do you pretend that you know do you hide them or try to hide them from people these are things to consider you know the next up number six tell the truth if you're being authentic why do you need to lie you know this pertains especially to anything that you say specifically about yourself so you know what if you can admit your mistakes admit your weaknesses admit your frailties then you know share your opinions honestly and freely you can actually take your healing and your whole damn life to the next level, my friend. It can be a very beautiful thing. Speaking of taking your life to the next level, simplify your life. So get rid of everything that you don't need or don't want or love. What you choose to keep can represent your preferences and your true self, believe it or not. So strip away the non-essential if you want and, and they're in, lying where everything, the things that you hold on to are the, you know, the things that can kind of indicate what your true essence is. You feel me? So start with clothes you never wear, things you never use, activities you don't enjoy. Get rid of that stuff. Only keep things that mean the most to you. This is a really great time. You know, when you're going through this, it's a really great time for you to clear your head, clear your life, get rid of all things that are no longer important to you. Okay? Number eight, do what you say you'll do. So do what you say you'll do. So you're going to keep your word and you're going to follow through on your promises. You feel me? It's going to help you feel more like congruent and other people will view you that way. They'll see you as more together, have your stuff, having your stuff together. When your words and your actions match, you're authentic, my friend. It's good stuff. When your thoughts line up with all of that and your feelings line up with all of that, life becomes a whole lot easier. Um, you know, you won't feel exhausted all the time when, because the fact is when you're dealing with a narcissist you're constantly having to change your opinions and your attitude and your personality to please them and when you don't have to do that anymore you won't feel the need to protect yourself from people um, because you can actually be really yourself be authentically you with your thoughts and your words and your actions you can invest some time in yourself and you can learn to be free my friend I mean how amazing is that all right all right I'm wrapping up for today so let me ask you a question before I do what do you think about all this breaking up with a narcissist stuff? Do you think that you can move forward? Do you think that you can learn to be more authentically yourself? And Or have you done it already and you're just looking to help other people understand? Or maybe you're looking for a little bit of help here. What can I do to help you? And how have I helped you? Or how can you be helped by this video? Um, or what could you add to this video to help another person going through it if you've already been through it? I would love it if you would share your thoughts and your experiences with me in the comments below and I'd love to discuss it with you. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I will answer either in text or in video, okay? Um, you guys have a wonderful week. Don't forget, visit queenbeing.com if you are, which is right here, queenbeing.com if you are interested in um, narcissistic abuse recovery information, um, learning more about narcissism and NPD, um, or anything related to that. Um, you can also visit uh, NarcissismSupportCoach.com right there. If you are looking for um, if you are looking for information on 
you know, um, well, I have a free five day email course there as well as all the videos and everything else listed as well. You can also visit um, my new site if you're looking to make a personal appointment with me to, to have one on one coaching or small group coaching. Uh, the new site is right here, and this is called um, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery dot online, and that's where you can go to make a direct. Um, you know, a direct appointment with me. You can set up the appointment yourself and everything, choose your time, all that stuff. All right. Or um, you can visit booksangiewrote.com, which um, is where you will find all the books I've written. All right. Thank you, everybody, for letting me be part of your day and part of your life and part of your recovery. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.